Since 2010, the New York Yankees have been called the New York Yankees. They have the same popular logo. They still play baseball, and they've continued to play at the new Yankee Stadium that opened the year before in 2009. Despite that, they haven't actually been the New York Yankees. That might make zero sense. Maybe it's a terrible way of explaining my point, but what I mean by that is that despite having that Yankee logo and brand slapped on them, this franchise has totally lost its way in the years following their last championship in 2009. The only thing carrying this franchise is the aura that surrounds them because of the success previous groups of players brought them, the success the late George Steinbrenner brought them. Other than that, the Yankees have honestly become the butt of a lot of jokes, a laughing stock by some fan bases across the league, yet all of a sudden, things could very well be changing and moving in a whole new direction. Really quick, I'm trying to get to 140,000 subscribers before 2024, so if you enjoy the content or are new and haven't hit that button yet, consider doing so. Thank you. Since 2009, the Yankees have had some good teams. Most of the years since 2009 have actually featured good teams. 14 seasons have passed since the Yankees last won it all, and they've actually made it to the postseason 10 times. They've made it six years in a row heading into the 2023 season before they'd miss for the first time since 2016, having a very disappointing year. Now, on the surface, you can obviously look at that and go, well, what's the problem? 10 playoff appearances in the last 14 years? That's really good. And you're right. It is really good. It's great, actually. But what the Yankees do as far as success doesn't exactly translate the same way it does for most other teams. If the Kansas City Royals, for example, had made the postseason 10 of the last 14 years with no championships to show for it, we would all praise them for good reason and acknowledge the disappointment and no rings, but still marvel at that success. The Yankees aren't the Kansas City Royals, though. Actually, the exact opposite. If a team like the Royals just makes the postseason, sneaks in via a wildcard spot, it's a success and the fans are really happy. Do they want to win it all? Of course. And are they happy if they don't win it all? No, they're of course sad, but they still understand that they are a small market franchise and have grown to be thankful for any playoff appearance they can get. As a perfect example of how a fan base like Royals fans are, when the Royals lost the World Series in a gut-wrenching and heartbreaking close finish in Game 7 at home back in 2014, the crowd went quiet for a little bit before chanting, Thank you, Royals. Here is a fan base watching another team, the San Francisco Giants, celebrate a championship on their field. Yet they still felt the need to show their love for their team and appreciate them for how far they went, even if they came up just short in the end. Now go over to the Bronx. If a team was celebrating a playoff series win or championship win on the field at Yankee Stadium, do you believe for a second that Yankees fans would start chanting, Thank you, Yankees, or Let's Go, Yankees? No, here's the reality. The Yankees players would have to be extra careful leaving the ballpark and getting home as safely and soundly as possible without getting hassled or booed on the way out. Now, you can argue whether Yankee fans being hard on their own players is a good thing or not, but the point is this franchise is like no other. Their fans have been conditioned to expect and want nothing less than a championship. You either win a championship or you don't and it's a failure. Period. That's it. So, yes, the Yankees may have 10 years worth of playoff teams over the last 14 years, but none of that means anything when there isn't a single World Series win to show for it. And not only that, the Yankees haven't even been to the World Series since they last made it and won it in 2009. The rival Red Sox, the team that was always looked at as the lesser of the two in the rivalry, have completely flipped that narrative, beating the Yankees both times they've faced them in the postseason since 2009, in the 2018 ALDS and the 2021 wildcard game. The so-called little brother in New York, the Mets, have even made the World Series more recently than the Yankees. And then you get to the teams down in Texas. If you want to count the Rangers in 2020, when they beat the Yankees in the ALCS, the Yankees are 0-5 against the state of Texas in the playoffs. But of course, what you really look at here is Houston. The Houston Astros are 4-0 against the Yankees in the playoffs. They beat them in the one-and-done wildcard game back in 2015, and the two have since gone on to match up three times in the ALCS, 2017, 2019, and 2022 winning every time, with it seemingly getting easier each time, winning in seven games in 2017, six games in 2019, with 2022 not even being a contest by the end, with the Astros sweeping the Yankees. Now, say what you want about 2017. The Astros cheated, yes, but even if you take that year away, the Astros still beat them again in 2019 and then again in 2022, and at that point, the Yankees and their fans have nothing else they can say about Houston other than the fact that Houston owns them. Boston, too. The Yankees are 
are 0-6 against the Astros and Red Sox in the playoffs since 2015. 0-7 if you want to throw the Rays in there too, another rival. So yeah, 10 playoff appearances in 14 years is good, but when you look at all the context I just went over, obviously it doesn't look good. At all, actually. It looks terrible. To lose to Boston twice is bad, losing to the Rays, but to be 0-4 against the Astros is the worst part, especially considering all the drama that went with that. To keep having chances at redemption only to get embarrassed by the end and get sent home packing every time is just unheard of for the Yankees. Well, unheard of for the Yankees pre-2010. Unfortunately for this franchise post-2009, this has become the norm. Some of the narratives surrounding the Yankees' ownership and front office is how they're cheap. Much cheaper than the late George Steinbrenner was, the father of the current owner, Hal Steinbrenner. That just isn't true though, because the Yankees have been at the top in the league at spending money year in, year out. That doesn't seem to be the problem. They've spent some money, a lot of money actually, on big name players, but I guess the problem is who they're spending it on and really who they're not going after. For example, when Manny Machado and Bryce Harper were free agents back before the 2019 season, I'm not exactly sure how many, but I'm sure a good chunk of Yankee fans expected the team to sign both players, most expected at least one of them. They of course ended up with neither and settled with guys instead who aren't even on the team anymore. So for reasons like this, Yankees general manager Brian Cashman not signing superstar players like that in free agency and choosing to trade for less expensive players, it's gotten him and the team in overall criticism by the fan base of playing it too cute and not fully going all in like George Steinbrenner would have. So maybe they have played it a little too cute. But they've also went out and paid Garrett Cole over $300 million, re-signed Aaron Judge to a massive contract, brought in Carlos Rodon on a pretty big deal, other things too. So they still spend money, but it's definitely not been the same. Obviously, there have been a number of contracts that haven't worked out. And again, to not get at least one of Bryce Harper or Manny Machado back in 2019 was and still is the perfect example of this team not quite operating the same. You're the New York Yankees. Those are superstars. You have the money and you get nobody? The fact that Aaron Judge was even thought to maybe sign somewhere else was insane, even if it was never that realistic. So it's just weird. They do spend a lot of money, but they don't really seem to spend it on the right players half the time. And they aren't going as hard after the big free agents like they used to. And after all these years of making the playoffs just to lose to rivals in the end, things actually got worse in 2023. And that's because they didn't make the playoffs at all. Something's gotta give. Change has to happen. If you're the Yankees running this team, it's time to become the quote-unquote evil empire again and strike fear into the entire league. That's really what needs to be done at the end of the day if this franchise ever wants to get back to what it once was. And based off some recent events, it looks like change is happening. Something the Yankees should do if they want to create change and get back to the old way is get a big name player, make a statement, build excitement and hype by bringing in a potential Hall of Fame player. And that's exactly what they just did. Juan Soto had been linked to the Yankees for a few weeks now in a potential trade, and then all of a sudden it seemed as if the trade wasn't happening. The two sides were at a crossroad because the Yankees weren't sure they should give up exactly what the Padres were asking for. Then all of a sudden, the Yankees and Red Sox agree to a deal that sent outfielder Alex Verdugo to the Yankees, which immediately got people thinking, well, they settled for him instead of Soto. But nope, because just hours later, it was being reported by everyone that the Yankees were close in finalizing a deal with the Padres for Juan Soto. An hour went by, another hour, the whole damn day went by, and all we heard was that the two sides were close, just trying to confirm everything. Then it seemed for a minute that the trade wasn't even going to happen, at least not until the next day. That is until the news dropped. It was official. Juan Soto had been traded to the Yankees. Now, does this immediately put the Yankees as the heavy favorites to win the World Series? No. There's still more that needs to be done with their roster, and one player doesn't mean everything. But to go out and acquire a guy like Juan Soto, a generational talent and future Hall of Famer who's only 25 years old, is of course a massive deal, and an incredible start to the Yankees potentially getting back to the evil empire they once were. But keyword start. In my opinion, the Yankees need to extend Juan Soto, who has just one year left before free agency. Even if they don't and have to wait until next offseason, they have to keep him on their team long term or else this trade means absolutely nothing. You can't trade potential valuable future assets for a rental player, even if it's one of the best players. To only have him for a single season would be a failure. They should be able to do it, obviously. They're the New York Yankees and with that comes deep pockets. So that's got to be a main priority for them, either immediately extending Soto long term 
or just finding a way somehow and re-signing him next year. But you can't stop there. The Yankees have also been heavily linked to highly anticipated Japanese star pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto along with some others. Whoever they end up getting, it's got to be big and it's got to continue to be that way. And Soto is a good sign of things to come for Yankees fans as far as how the front office and ownership is currently looking at things. A sign that maybe they are fully going back to the George era, an era where he expected nothing less than a championship. He wanted to win more than anybody. He hated losing. He just wasn't going to put up with it. So as a result, he pulled out his checkbook. He got some of the best players in all of baseball on one team the Yankees. It's not like the Yankees need to renovate their entire team. Yes, they just had a bad year, but some moves here and there, big moves here and there, like Juan Soto, can drastically change things. I mean, they already have the 2022 MVP Aaron Judge, the 2023 Cy Young Award winner Garrett Cole, plus several others who should be good and should be better in 2024. So now add Soto and maybe another star, plus other less notable players who can provide some value, and you got a much better team. Juan Soto and Aaron Judge in the same lineup makes me scared, and should make any non-Yankee fan scared, along with any non-Yankee pitcher. Like I said, does this confirm the Yankees World Series ticket? No, not at all. The Padres just had Soto and several other star players, yet finished with the same exact record as New York. So we can talk about the hype all we want, and it's all we can do right now. But at the end of the day, all that matters is what happens on the field during the marathon of a season. And as of this moment, we don't truly know what will happen. We can only go off of what we currently see. And what I see is a front office and ownership showing some promise that they want to get back to the way the old Yankees were, a team that wasn't getting bullied around by Houston every other year and becoming a laughing stock. So if Soto ends up not being a Yankee for life and is on another team for the rest of his career post-2024, this trade means nothing, and the Yankees are kind of back to square one as far as this whole plan on getting back to the evil empire goes. The Yankees can very well go out next year, suck, lose Soto, I mean everything could go incredibly wrong, so I'm not going to claim that this quote unquote evil empire is back, and that the Yankees will be a dynasty moving forward. But what I will claim is that this very well could be the start of something special in the Bronx. A new era of Yankees baseball that doesn't only feature frustrating endings. Endings of either missing the playoffs or losing to a rival in the postseason, but rather the complete opposite, the way it was when the boss, aka George, was around. So again, the Yankees haven't won anything yet, and there's nothing to truly celebrate because it's the offseason, but getting a once-in-a-lifetime talent like Juan Soto is definitely a start and attempt to make things better, an attempt to make things right if you're the Yankees, and although there's a lot more that needs to be done, mostly on the field, a trade for Juan Soto could very well be the start of the next Yankees dynasty, something we haven't seen in over 20 years. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.